advised. Today on an all new Ricky. It is the most important person you can hire. The person taking care of your children. True stories of nanny nightmares. They actually went and questioned the babysitter and we saw it on the news. That's the first time we found out. She confessed. Confessed to what? Confessed to shaking him. Is your baby in good hands? What did you see on that camera? It was disturbing enough that we immediately called the police. What you need to know before picking your child care. Absolutely monitor what's going on in your home. And make sure you follow up and do background checks and check references all yourself. How could anyone harm any baby like that? On Recently, the country has been rocked by two stories involving a New York City nanny and a Naperville, Illinois babysitter who allegedly murdered the children in their care. Even without these cautionary tales, all parents know that one of the toughest and most crucial decisions they have to make is whom they will trust to take care of their child. Whether it's a nanny, daycare provider, or a babysitter, leaving your precious cargo in the hands of someone else can be frightening. Unfortunately for some of our guests today, their worst fears came true. But our intention today is not to scare you. It is to share stories and critical information that are essential to helping safeguard your family. Like most fathers, Richard was ecstatic over the birth of his healthy baby boy, Rain. But that excitement quickly turned into a nightmare the day he picked him up from the daycare center. Take a look. Rain was our second child, born on October 30th, 1995. He was a happy baby, developing normally, playful and intelligent. At a month and a half old, we began to leave him at our daycare center. We trusted our provider as our daughter had grown up going there, and she was always happy when she was left with the caregiver. On January 23rd, we received a phone call from the daycare telling us Rain wouldn't respond and we should come and get him. Something was definitely wrong. Rain was unconscious. He was lifeless, and his color was a bluish tone. We took him to the hospital immediately, but the doctors couldn't figure out what had happened to our little boy. Please welcome Richard to the show. Beautiful little baby boy. So is it true that at first authorities blamed you for something? Yeah, they, um, well, it started because uh, the daycare lady called me and said, you need to come pick up your son. I'm like, well, what for? She's like, he's not responding. I'm like, well, what does that mean, not responding? And she says, you just come pick him up. So I came and picked him up, took him to the hospital. Um, they started writing tests. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. So eventually, the doctor said, have you thought about, you know, child abuse? And we said, no, no, this couldn't happen. This is a So he was three memory. months old. Three and months so he old. wasn't responding. So it was like he was in a, he was, a coma? He was, they don't call it a coma, but yeah, I call it a coma. He was not there. He, he was, was not, not responding. There. He wasn't responding at all. He so was, he was, he was moaning. You. He was doing this, kind of this moaning, this humming, moaning, kind of the repetitive sound. So who did they question after question? They questioned my wife first, and I asked her, what did they talk about? And she's like, eh, they just asked about scheduling. So then they questioned me. In the middle of that questioning, they started doing the, what do you do when you get mad at your child? It's like, um, he's three months old. And they're like, so how do you punish your child? It was like, and I was just like, do you think I did this? And they're like, well, we got, we're going to question everybody. So, okay, so who else did they question, and what exactly did you come to find out what was done to him? What we found out is the... Next day, we spent the night at the hospital, slept on the floor. The next day, they actually went and questioned the babysitter, our daycare provider, and we saw it on the news. That's the first time we found out. We were watching TV on the news, it's just like, oh, she confessed, which a lot of times in these cases they don't do. So confess to what? Confess to shaking him. And so what kind of uh, fallout has there been with him and his health? Um... Basically, when she shook him, when you have to, when you shake a baby, it's not like you're playing with them. You have to have the head snap back and forth. So his brain was 75% damaged. And so for about probably 12 or 13 days, he was unconscious. When we brought him home from the hospital, he was unconscious. They taught us how to feed him through a tube. And one of our happiest days is one day he cracked an eye. And it was like a fourth of an inch. And we're just like... Maybe he'll come out of this. But it's just such a long process. And ever since then, he's had, you know, a brain injury doesn't go away. It's not like you cut yourself and it heals. 
So he's had physical and mental Delays. problems. Yeah. He's, he's now how old? He is 17 now. He's 17 and he has the mental capacity of like a... Well, three to six. Depends on what chart you use and what, what's, what's he doing. So this woman who is the daycare provider, uh, she admitted to shaking him. Did she spend any time in jail? She, um, at that time, again, was 17 years ago. But what she got was, uh, she, she confessed, but she got two years probation and essentially 90 days in jail. But then they split that. So you do 45 at the beginning, 45 at the end. But if, for good behavior, she spent about probably 30 days in jail. Well, I know you made a documentary about Rain and offered a glimpse into the life of a child with shaken baby syndrome. Take a look. Every morning, every night, every day, somebody has to take care of Rain. Change him, dress him, feed him, clean him. And this will be the case for the rest of his life. Rain is probably the biggest challenge of my life. Rain is my brother, and even though he has some problems with his brain, I still love him. I could use this just to focus on one day at a time with him, because if I think about what happened to him and why him and all those other things, it's just too depressing. The biggest frustration is that, um, one, that he can't talk, and he tries to communicate. Yeah. Is that better? I think he's very intelligent. I think he has a lot of comprehension. And because of that, I think it's very frustrating. I wish he could be toilet trained. I think that would help the family. I have a tendency to want to always tell people, you know, it's not his fault. It's not his fault he's like this. He's a victim. He's a victim of a violent crime. And he's doing the best he can. Ah. Beautiful boy. He is. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's a constant source of struggles and frustration, but he'll give you these moments of wonderful joy. And it's kind of, you kind of, kind of balance them out. Have you forgiven the woman that did this? Um, you, I don't know. I mean, it's, forgiveness is, I don't dwell on it. I think it's okay not to forgive. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't let it consume me. I don't mm -hmm. let the anger burn up in me. we my wife and I have moved on. We're all about trying to spread the word of prevention. And awareness. Yeah, so what are the warning signs that we need to look out for with our child care providers? Oh, for us, and probably the biggest thing, when we, we do speeches sometimes, we'll say be very wary of in-home daycares because a lot of people get in it for the wrong reasons. Okay, what kind of reasons? I'm sorry, I don't uh, want to be naive. No, no, uh, such things like um, they, want, they want to do an in-home daycare just because they want to stay home with their own kids. Mm -hmm. Or the idea that they think it's easy. But if you have an in-home daycare, you're working from the time you wake up. Because a lot of them have their own children. From mm -hmm. the time you work up, wake up to the time you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And it's just this constant kids. There's no break. Mm -hmm. what, what is uh, Rain like today? Uh, today, again, he is still developmentally delayed. And he's like having a toddler at 17. So he's not always fond of mom or dad. Mm -hmm. uh, he's trying to be independent. But, but he really can't. So it's really frustrating for him and, and his parents. But he still has all these uh, physical and mental disabilities. And tell us about the foundation that you started. Uh, my wife and I, and this we started this is called Progressions, just because we wanted to get together with other parents of shaken baby syndrome, and just as a support group. And now we've really just going out with the high schools, um, civic organizations, just spreading the word that you know never shake a baby, and be very careful about who you leave your kids with. The National Center on Shaken Baby Syndrome has been a great support. If anybody has any questions, they can also answer questions. I gotta say hi to my kids. Hi, hi. Georgia. <laughs> hi, Rain. Hi, Noah. I'm sorry. Hi, Rain. Hi, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> again. love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Coming up, we will meet a mother who says she caught her nanny on tape harming her child. Her story is next. <laughs> Coming up, 